Так, ну, а мы продолжаем, пока народ собирается, я постараюсь немножко... Пойду с континуа. So in the next presentation uh, will be about vacuum. Who likes vacuum? And who doesn't like vacuum? Who knows uh, what uh, will happen if we switch it off? And who dreams of switching it off uh, despite anything? No one. So that uh, these people uh, should not turn up. Uh, Alexey Lisovsky from Data Egret will tell us uh, what uh, will happen if we switch it off altogether. Thank you, Fyodor. Good uh, afternoon to all those uh, who have come. My name is Alexey. And now I will uh, tell you about vacuum and what happens when uh, people just uh, unplug it, what happens with the database uh, and uh, how we should act uh, not to, to get uh, at this point. And I will tell you about uh, tuning uh, vacuum and uh, I will tell you just generally about uh, vacuum and some of its features. Let me start by saying how people just uh, come at uh, unplugging vacuum and uh, how just it occurs to them. Something is wrong with the mic, I will take another one. So I will try using this mic, it sounds like more or less okay. So uh, let us, uh, let me first start with uh, how people start thinking about unplugging vacuum, or what happens afterwards and how vacuum uh, is uh, arranged, why it is better not to unplug it and uh, how to set it uh, so that it works uh, well. And there is like uh, total problems uh, from vacuum and that is why people start thinking about switching it off. Very often developers uh, come up to sysadmins and uh, say that uh, the whole system is lagging and we need to do something. As a rule, uh, just admin uh, launches uh, their favorite utility and uh, sees the uh, load on the disk and uh, sees that the disks uh, are overloaded, uh, that there is this problem and something should be done with it. What happens afterwards? People start thinking and looking at what happens with their queries. Uh, they see that even the ordinary commit uh, transactions take uh, too much time. And that is uh, an issue as well and something should be done with it. What happens next? The developers department uh, start complaining uh, that uh, queries uh, crash uh, and uh, log uh, as uh, notifications uh, that uh, queries uh, crashed, uh, replicas uh, then uh, do not manage to do it and uh, then they see that a replica crashed uh, and uh, they are not accessible and that is already a critical situation and something should be done with that. And when the administrator looks into the matter further on, for example, uh, opening your top uh, software and uh, they see that uh, a lot of auto vacuums are launched and they generate a load uh, per disk and they create a lot of transaction uh, logs and uh, replicas uh, do not have enough time to process it all and uh, 
that is a problem for databases and the database start uh, behaving in an unpredicted way in terms of returning uh, the queries and uh, the apps uh, start uh, hanging up uh, and customers are dissatisfied and the business uh, is suffering. And uh, what should be done? Uh, there rise rules, some attempts uh, to tune vacuum, uh, to rectify the station. Uh, and uh, to restart vacuum and then at some point of time a person some person says let's just uh, unplug uh, the auto vacuum let's just uh, set auto vacuum as off so they switch it off and uh, everything might uh, seem okay it might look that the app uh, works uh, normally the data are read uh, the queries are processed fast, uh, customers uh, are satisfied, but there are some uh, things that in long-term perspective will uh, aggravate it all. The most obvious thing is that uh, the planner statistics uh, is not uh, gathered anymore, because uh, at a vacuum it does not uh, simply clear the tables, but also gather statistics of uh, data distribution that planner uses uh, to build the optimal plans uh, for queries. As soon as we switch off for auto vacuum, uh, tables and indexes uh, are not cleared up and they start uh, bloating. They have a lot of uh, rubbish and the tables and indexes uh, start growing in size. And uh, it entails the fact that uh, shared buffers uh, area where all tables, indexes uh, are stored. So this area starts being used ineffectively and there are these rubbish uh, lines there and uh, for queries uh, to read some uh, data they need to load tables with this rubbish and uh, have it in uh, shared uh, buffers and uh, the performance uh, falls down and in a long term perspective uh, switching off a vacuum brings uh, about bad results and uh, there is a little test that I prepared for one of the conference and uh, you can find it at this uh, short link and uh, in the test uh, we launch PGBench, uh, the switched off uh, table, and uh, PGBench uh, writes into the table, deletes something, updates something, and uh, we can see the uh, fall of uh, performance uh, after a certain time, because uh, the time of uh, query processing goes up, and the performance is going down. So that is uh, where you can uh, easily see what happens when you switch off uh, auto vacuum. And now I believe it's high time uh, that I spoke about vacuum and how it works. Why we need that? Uh, because a lot of uh, administrators and developers uh, have a vague understanding about uh, auto vacuum, and even those who write uh, develop patches for Postgres uh, know just some bits and pieces about auto vacuum. So let me give you a more or less uh, integral picture about auto vacuum. First of all, I would like uh, to start with MVCC. Please raise your hands who know what it is. Great. So we will not uh, speak much about it. So MVCC, briefly speaking, is an database engine, Postgres engine, and that is how a database provides data to customers, to clients. And uh, this engine is uh, high performance uh, and uh, it provides for high concurrency and uh, clients uh, can uh, connect uh, to database uh, and performance for read and write uh, of a database is really very good. And, uh, Writers and readers do not uh, block uh, each other, uh, apart from some situations uh, when there are these uh, blocks on purpose, some limited situations. The way it looks uh, like in practice, uh, clients are connected to database, they open transactions and start working with the data. They receive a snapshot of data and they can uh, make certain corrections uh, into this data, either insert, uh, delete uh, or update. And all these changes within transactions are not seen uh, to other transactions until commit or rollback happens. As soon as a transaction uh, carries out commit, uh, the changes uh, can be visible to other transactions uh, that uh, are opened or that are run at this moment of time. And that is the way it works. A transaction counter is growing, data are updated, some data are deleted, and some data are not uh, topical anymore, not uh, 
actual anymore. Uh, uh, there appear the rubbish lines, and in the lines uh, there are two service uh, rights. Uh, first, uh, ex mean uh, that shows the number of transactions in the line. So when we have uh, insert, uh, this x bin uh, has the value of transaction inserted. When we have update of a line, it's not like in place update, but we just sign the line as deleted and insert a new line as a new one. And in the new line, we sign uh, xmax field and we indicate the number of uh, transactions that uh, carried out the deletion. And as for deletion, Later, we just uh, uh, sign the uh, line as uh, deleted. And because of that, uh, there appear rubbish lines uh, with XMAX, and vacuum is needed to clear them uh, up, uh, the lines uh, that none of the transactions uh, need anymore, and they can be safely deleted. Uh, and this space uh, can be used in the table or in the index uh, for another time. And uh, there are certain indicators uh, where the queries uh, determine uh, which uh, part of the table to go to, and uh, these indicators indicate uh, the line. And when delete and update uh, operations work with the page, uh, some versions of lines uh, become outdated, and afterwards they would have to be cleared up, because uh, at a certain point of time they will not be needed by any of the transactions. So. Vacuum comes and uh, it uh, frees uh, the indicators, uh, making them uh, accessible for further use, uh, and uh, therefore the page will uh, receive uh, new space that can be used for further writes, uh, inserts, updates, uh, and so on. And vacuum is needed to preserve this uh, overall uh, performance uh, so that it should not uh, suffer, so that outdated uh, versions of lines are cleared up, uh, so that sh shared buffers area can be used effectively, and so that uh, there is no bloating effect, so that uh, the database is uh, in tone, so to say, so that it, it uh, should not bloat. And uh, we have got very close to the vacuum. First of all, that is a background uh, task, and when we uh, launch Postgres, uh, we launch the daemon of uh, auto vacuum, and uh, from time to time uh, it launches uh, its uh, workers, and the number of workers is limited. We can uh, manage the number of workers, stating that at a certain point of time the maximum number of them will uh, run. What a vacuum uh, is launched uh, at a certain interval that can also be managed and uh, auto vacuum gathered statistics for planner as I have already mentioned and statistics for planner is uh, gathered and the planner on the basis of this statistic can generate uh, good uh, plans uh, that would extract the data from databases more effectively. As for how vacuum processes a database, auto vacuum is launched and uh, it has to select certain uh, database. It is clear that uh, Postgres instance or cluster can have a lot of databases and uh, we cannot just take an uh, alphabetical list uh, and walk around it. At auto vacuum selects uh, those databases that uh, have not been processed for a long time or where there is a risk of uh, this transaction counter turnover and the transaction counter is limited uh, by 32 bits uh, and uh, it is just 4.5 uh, billion. So when a database has a very large uh, write, uh, this uh, counter can uh, overfill and there is a special wraparound uh, that uh, tackles this problem, but uh, that is not interesting to us uh, so far. But when the database uh, is uh, selected, uh, we again uh, come to work on just alphabetical list. And for table selection, there is a special formula that I will speak about later on that operates uh, with a number of deadlines in the table. As soon as the number of deadlines in the table exceeds a certain threshold, uh, this table goes to a list uh, of processing and when this list is made up uh, vacuum worker starts processing these tables another thing 
by default, settings uh, are not so good uh, for AutoVacuum. Just uh, developers uh, of Postgres uh, made it uh, so that Postgres uh, can run uh, at any hardware so that the user can start uh, using uh, the database, experimenting, working with it, and these settings have to be reconsidered uh, all the time. And very often when we uh, audit uh, databases and configs of uh, our clients, we can see that uh, the settings of auto vacuum are by default or are not adequate, and we have to treat it attentively all the time. So Postgres uh, is uh, always uh, under development and different people and different uh, improvements uh, take place from one uh, to another release and uh, the most uh, significant ones uh, happened in uh, 9.6 release uh, so if uh, you use uh, previous uh, releases uh, and you have certain problems with uh, auto vacuum uh, it might make sense uh, to upgrade uh, to 9.6 but first we have to set vacuum to open config to have a look at where it is set so that the vacuum can start running and what should we start with we should always remember about vacuum that uh, it is uh, an assessive tool and it is based on assessment and uh, several parameters are responsible for these assessments and vacuum runs in such a way that uh, it has a certain scoring counter and uh, when it starts processing table it starts uh, reading a page and uh, for every page processing a certain number of uh, scores uh, are awarded and uh, as soon as uh, it uh, gets to a certain value the worker makes a pause uh, for a certain number of time uh, and then uh, it uh, sets the counter at zero and starts processing the table again so that is classical batch processing and uh, for this scoring uh, at page uh, processing, several parameters uh, are responsible. That is, a heap, uh, hit, miss, and dirty. Hit is uh, the number of scores uh, per page processing that is in uh, sharing memory. So that is the cheapest uh, processing because we did uh, something with the page in shared memory, uh, processed it, and so on. Miss is uh, if we need to read the page uh, from the disk, uh, if it is not present in shared memory, and certain resources have to be spent on its uh, read. Here, more scores uh, are awarded because you have to read the page from the disk. But sometimes it so happens that the page is not present in shared memory, but it doesn't mean that it is on the disk. It can be in the page cache of the OS. And uh, the third uh, parameter is dirty. That is a uh, number of scores uh, awarded per page processing if uh, you need to write it on the disk at the same time. So some changes have to be sent to the disk, and it is a uh, more costly transaction. Therefore, per page processing, these scores are awarded uh, for a parameter vacuum cost limit. And this parameter defines uh, the uh, size of the batch, uh, how many scores will be uh, awarded. Uh, and uh, pause uh, is uh, defined uh, by delay parameter. And it is clear that uh, with the help of cost, uh, we can uh, influence uh, the size of the batch uh, and uh, with the help of delay we can influence uh, the pause uh, uh, parameter uh, so uh, we can uh, decide uh, whether vacuum uh, should process a small number of uh, pages and sleep for a long time or vice versa. Another thing is that a lot of workers uh, can uh, run for vacuum. Uh, by default, uh, the maximum number of workers that can uh, run simultaneously is three. And at modern uh, servers uh, where the process cores number is uh, two and more, this process parameters uh, has to be increased. And I believe that uh, the optimal value will be 10, 15 percent uh, from the general uh, overall number of cores. That is what I think. Another parameter, nap time, determines how often we need to launch an auto vacuum worker. By default, it is uh, six seconds, and that is a pretty large uh, value, and it makes uh, sense to lower it uh, to one uh, seconds. 
one second is enough uh, in terms of Postgres code. There is a small function that calculates uh, the timer, so it's not resource intensive transaction, so it makes sense to lower it. And another important thing is that uh, the parameter that uh, influences the size of the batch is uh, split uh, between the active workers launched uh, at present. So it should be borne in mind as well. That is why it doesn't make sense uh, to have cost limit uh, too low or too high. It should be spread around all workers. As for what to begin with, Vacuum needs to assess how many dead lines uh, there are in the table, and an ordinary formula is used for that uh, to determine the number of dead uh, lines or tuples, and it uh, defines whether it's uh, time to launch Vacuum. And uh, we take the number of uh, lines in the table from the moment of uh, last Vacuum execution and uh, multiply it uh, by the scale factor variable and uh, by default that is uh, 0.2 so that is 20 percent and uh, we add a threshold value by default uh, 50 lines and receive the threshold higher well exceeding which auto vacuum has to be launched that is how auto vacuum is launched by default if uh, there are more than 20 percent of deadlines and uh, it makes uh, sense uh, to lower it uh, as well to 5%, uh, 2%, or 1%. And sometimes it uh, happens uh, when managing with the help of scale factor does not uh, give the needed effect. And uh, it can be seen at large uh, tables when a table has uh, a lot of uh, million lines. Uh, in even 1% is a lot of lines, then it makes sense to have scale factor as zero and use only threshold parameter to indicate clearly that a vacuum should be launched after 1 million lines. So, you either choose the scale factor or you use the threshold. Uh, also, the, the vacuum, auto vacuum settings depend on the type of hardware you use. Four or five years ago, when uh, the uh, CD disks were uh, uh, practically everywhere, you had to pay a lot of attention to the vacuum settings because you launch a lot of work as you make vacuum aggressive, uh, you get a boost in productivity. Uh, so you need you need to ma make a vacuum less uh, uh, lazy. Well, the, the situation with SSD disks be, be, be became better. So uh, you have to revise vacuum. You have to make it more aggressive. That's the task number one when you what, that you need to do when you do your audit. But SSD disk um, uh, manufacturer uh, uh, SSD uh, productivity is not uh, enough sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, uh, when there's lots of requests, lots of people reading, read, uh, uh, writing, then productivity suffers. So you need to uh, install enterprise disks, which are not reliable for this problem. When you use NVMe, then you, you don't face the pro vacuum problem, because they have very high pr productivity. So vacuum is, uh, is never relevant. You can do uh, uh, aggressive vacuum, you can do lots of workers, only you need to monitor whether there are any problems with auto vacuum in the course of m managing a database. So the better your hardware, uh, the fewer are the problems related to uh, auto vacuum. Uh, so the general conclusion you can make here is as follows. We regulate delays, that, that is the nap to time delays and we regulate the, the batch size. You regulate the, the, the pack size, you regulate the interval, you monitor, 
and you see whether you have any issues or, don't, or you don't. If you have problems, then you continue tuning. If you don't have any issues, then you just really leave your settings as they are and you live on happily. So this is an example of the setting which you use for our SSD disk for various customers. You can download these slides and then you can look at these settings and you can use them in your work as well. But there's an important note here. These are the settings for SSD. I see people making pictures. So another thing you should remember. When you set up your vacuum, you can need some individual parameters for particular tables or indexes. It happens quite often. You have huge indexes or huge tables, or you will need to make a sequence, or you need to launch a vacuum often. And then you need to use the individual parameters of the vacuum, which is set using storage parameters. You can identify for tables, for spaces, for other uh, and indicators. It's a very good tool, and you, you need to remember that it is there. Also, there are cases when simple auto vacuum doesn't help. So you need to use some uh, outside uh, tools which are not part of the uh, uh, out of the box Postgres. Usually, it's come table and PG repack. They use their own methodologies to accelerate. They have different approaches. So. I suggest that you first try them on your test servers. You see how they work with your codes. But the end result is always the same. The table, the database uh, it shrinks and gets in very good shape. So I highly recommend them. Now, a few words about monitoring. I should probably tell you how to monitor the vacuum. It's not so easy. There are two areas in vacuum where you can see what's going on with vacuum. First, this is stat activity. I, I think that uh, any monitoring should show data from this particular s spot because it sh shows the state of the uh, vacuum. This view app can show you how many vacuums are running currently, the current state, whether there are any blockings, the age. You can always use PG stats to look how many vacuums are working now and for how long a time. So this is how the classical graph in the monitoring system looks. We have no information about the number of workers, the wraparound workers, and the highest limit. Uh, and we will see whether we are limiting the, the threshold of the number of workers. So you can use this graph to analyze easily whether you have any issues. If you're bumping into the red line, uh, if your workers are too long, or if, if, if you don't have enough workers, you have to make them more aggressive, you have to tune them up to increase the number. And you should also have a look at how long that works. So I rec recommend all of you to have these drafts. The second place you should look for is the view app, which came with the 9.6 version. It's the PG Start Progress Vacuum. It shows you the current workers and the, their progress. Well, by default, this view takes the uh, raw data and shows you raw data, so it's not quite clear. Uh, what, what they mean. So you have to join in uh, stat activity plus you state the systemic functions which make the size a bit more acceptable uh, uh, and present them in megabytes, kilobytes and other forms which are more uh, understandable. Then you can make such a request. It will show you how many vacuums are now running, what tables are used and what the progress is. So in this case, we can see the vacuum is processing around 50% of the table. And it's going to work for another, it has worked for three hours, it is going to work for another three hours at least. So you can use this view to estimate the vacuum progress, how much it has worked, how much it is going to work. So it's quite a useful tool. I recommend you to use it. Oh, basically this brings my presentation to an end. So what's the takeaway? You should never un unplug the vacuum. It's a very useful thing for your database. It is not e uh, difficult to set it up. If you know how it works, you can always do it. And you can always use particular parameters. You can in in insert them, you can analyze them, and see whether things are getting better or worse. But clearly, you need to use the monitoring always to see how the database is changing its operation. So vacuum is good. Helps you to bring to keep your database in good shape so that it doesn't swell. Never, never unplug the vacuum. Thank you.
Thank you. Questions? Good, good morning. Thank you for your report. Your report. I'm, I'm Andre. I'm, I'm here. Version 6 had, uh, was expected to get to uh, offer an optimized vacuum uh, to use data which is not used. But I can see uh, on the active server that there are partitions where data is not used. But, but the data is vacuumed all the time. Could you please clarify on this? Maybe I've said something wrong. That's right. Version 9.6 has this the, 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 the card which shows the frozen blocks, which helps you to avoid processing them when you, when you use the vacuum. Uh, the Postgres config also has options which affect the, this wraparound vacuum. You need to increase them a bit to be able to, 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 for this vacuum to work uh, uh, not so often. But well, this vacuum should actually be quite so easy to handle. It runs through your table, sees that all the blocks are frozen. Uh, so, so, do I understand you correctly? Uh, well, it simply takes shorter time to work. It does not use the, there is the server resources the way to use 9.5 or previously. So, uh, well, it is now easier, uh, but it still will process all the pages. But when it sees that the lines are processed, the lines are frozen, uh, it simply does not enter the line. Yes, the microphone over there, please. Do I understand you correctly? If you have an aggressive vacuum that reads the pages, uh, uh, and it reads from the di disk, I'm sorry, I can't hear what the speaker is saying. I'm sorry, the microphone does not work. No, uh, w w when the auto vacuum worker launches, then the buffer manager uses 30 kil kilobyte bu uh, cycle buffer. Uh, all, the, all the lines go through the bus buffer, so the cache does not change. So, so, so it reads the page from the disk. It's not in the page cache, right? So, uh, so, 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 so it flushes the page cache. Uh, but the shared buffer is not flushed. That's right. The page cache is flushed. Alexei. The only th uh, issue that we face, we have hosts where we have hundreds of thousands of tables. We also had the uh, default time like five minutes, one minute. Uh, as a result, this was used to swallow a lot. We had to reduce this uh, to just one to once a day because otherwise we, we had uh, to reach 100% every five minutes. But the CPU and the disks. Well, there's just one choice. So you need to increase the number of workers. Many tables, many workers. That's the only case. So if you bump it to the number of CPUs, then you have to extend the resource of your server. But also, there's another interesting point to it. You need to, to see what energy saving, uh, saving mode is used. Because quite often, people use Panto. Um, but uh, Ubuntu uh, has a, a power save default setting. So, the server uses 3 or 4 gigahertz processor, but it only uses 1.2. This is very bad. We simply use performance governor in this case. And then the system uses the, the highest uh, f frequency. Clearly, it gets hot, but at least it starts to react much quicker. And all the programs on this processor are stable. So look at your uh, power saving mode. Maybe, you, 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 but also you need to increase the number of workers. If your disks uh, are not affected, then you need to increase the number of disks. You will not be able to get a silver bullet. Uh, you will not be able uh, to have vacuum all the time. Uh, so it's a trade-off. You either allow a certain bloat in your database and vacuum starts to work slower, but then disks do not suffer. Or you increase, the, uh, you upgrade the hardware, 
and then the vacuum becomes more aggressive. Another question, please. Dennis, thank you very much for your report. This uh, auto vacuum uh, uh, is quite known. Let's say we have to open tra transactions. In one of them, we change data. We delete it or, or we update the, da the data. Then, automatically, after some time, uh, after a certain uh, factor or threshold, the auto vacuum is, uh, is launched, right? I'm sorry, I cannot hear what the, what the gentleman is saying. Nothing. Uh, but uh, but the uh, entry does not work because the, there's an, another uh, transaction open which can s still see these lines. As a result, the, 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 the auto vacuum uh, sp uh, damages your statistics if it does not use the analyzer. The current version of the Postgres adds uh, a certain number of deadlines to each statistics. Uh, it's in PG class in real tuples. With each vacuum, the number grows, and this affects uh, the request. That's right. To, to avoid adding in the dead, uh, the dead tuple the number to it, oh, I found a patch that the community did from second quadrant. I tested it, it works. Still, every single vacuum without analyzer increases the number of the dead the tuples and uh, uh, the damage your statistics. Well, yes, that's right. The main idea is to avoid long transactions, to reduce the life and to avoid them from becoming idle transactions so that the database does not expect uh, the next uh, command from the client. You don't do any uh, request to external resources from the transactions. This is my main recommendation. So reduce the lifetime of the transaction. Yes, that's fair enough, but this is not a bug, is it? That's right, it is not a bug. It's the way the vacuum behaves. If the lines can be potentially required for, for some other transactions, you cannot clear them. But why do we need to increase each vacuum? Uh, could you say again, please? I can, cannot hear you at all. Why do you need to increase the, uh, the number of the real tuples every time? It's a hard one. I cannot answer. Don't think that the vacuum does it. It's the transaction that does it. The update, the insert, etc. A vacuum is just bringing your statistics to what uh, there really is in the table. No. The vacuum does not increase the number of tuples. It can only reduce it. That's right. Uh, the open transaction generates uh, new entries, which I mean, by, uh, the, there are new transactions, uh, fresh transactions, which are generated by other transactions. And the, this uh, transaction also adds more entries. So real tuples is updated. As soon as vacuum sto stops it, it's, uh, it counts all the number of lies uh, which are still there and simply, simply records this number. So you cannot do, cannot do any analytics whether you will need it or you will not need it or you're going to do something about it. So the vacuum simply records what is there. Other questions? You mentioned that the vacuum is directly related to the planner. What uh, mechanisms do vacuum, does vacuum use? How does it impact the request from the planner? Uh, the Postgres code has a special function that gathers statistics about the, the distribution of data in, inside the tables. It's a special subsystem, I would say, in auto vacuum. It reads a certain sample of, of the data and makes a distribution based on this sample, the number of uh, unique uh, uh, values, etc. And then it stores the system in the system view, PGS, PGS stats. 
because one of them is the table, another one is the view for the table. So when the planner makes uh, request plans, it reads information from that particular table and makes the plans accordingly and chooses the optimal one. So, one thing that I've uh, struggled with a little bit is we have some symptoms with large numbers of tables, and uh, the, they have each, uh, you know, maybe 300 million rows. And uh, over time, with the same of the uh things get repeated. So, at one point, we try to set things to a more absolute limit, and out of that, you basically went to crazy, and uh, took about two. Days and get back to an equal Do you have any thoughts about how to avoid some of that? My English is not so good, so uh, I actually had to come to our booth, make an egress, and we can talk uh, more closely. Okay. Yeah, because I'm here it's not so good. Uh, link. Thank you. So are we going to stop this uh, abuse of the poor microphone? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are five minutes ahead of schedule with the Q&A, which is very good. So it's now lunch time. So.